Flying up and down the neck is fun, but you can really get a ton of licks from just one small spot on the fretboard. In this lesson, we're gonna unpack the first few phrases from the minor blues jam that you just heard, which we stayed in one spot, even when the chords changed. My BGI members have access to the full lesson that covers the entire solo and additional lesson materials like downloadable PDF and Guitar Pro Tab, plus the backing track and the incredibly useful Sound Slice Interactive Tab Player Plus. You'll have access to the entire library of premium lessons now with over 50 in-depth step-by-step courses to help you play better blues. If you're not already a MyBGI member, click the link in the description to join. Now, let's get on with the lesson. All right, let's unpack those first couple of phrases and then we're gonna dive into where they're coming from in regards to what scale. We're working in the key of G minor here. So we're gonna feature this G note on the second string, eighth fret, quite a bit. In fact, is we're gonna start there. And this is in six, eight times. So we're gonna start on our three count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one. All right, so let's take a closer look at that. And that really is kind of a, an intro phrase. We really don't start the progression. The band doesn't come in until we come to our root note here on G. So what's happening? So we start out on three with that G, second string, eighth fret, up to the B flat, that's the 11th fret, and you can push up and do a little quarter step blues bend there. Then what we're gonna do is play the C, on the eighth fret of the first string and then the D on the 10th fret first string as well back to our B flat bend it up and this time we're doing that quarter step bend again but kind of catch the pick at the top of the bend see how I'm still bending the string but there's nothing no sound coming out I've stopped the note and then we're going to release that bend and play our G that's the downbeat when the band comes in all right, so getting this all in time, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six, one. I was a little late on that one there just for effect, but one, two, three, four, five, and six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the first measure over G minor, where the band is playing, if you got the track, that's the first measure when the band comes in, we're just letting that hang, right? We did our work to set us up for that measure. Then we're letting that hang. And then on beat four of the next measure, we're gonna let that hang through uh, beats one, two, and three of that next measure, second measure when the band comes in. What we're gonna do is slide into the F on the 10th fret, third string, that eighth fret G again, second string, up to the B flat this time, just play it solid. And then we're gonna really split beat six into uh, 16th notes here. Right, so we're going to play the B flat and then that F again before resolving back to our G. So the next phrase sounds like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. And here we're just going to drag off from that F, 10th fret, third string. Just kind of hit it on beat four and then easily, nice and gently. We really want to make sure that we get the dynamics right in a piece like this. So we're going to play with some notes louder, some notes softer. And that one feels like a good one to play nice and soft. All right. Our next phrase is a repeat of the first with one little addition. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm reaching up to that B flat and dragging off. Again, this should be a very light note. We don't want to emphasize this. Right? You can. If it feels good to you, go for it. I'm not here to give you rules or anything. But the way I'm playing it is with a very light attack. As a matter of fact, when I was rehearsing this, a lot of times I wouldn't even pick it. I would just hit the note with my uh, fretting finger and slide off. I like being able to control the dynamics. That's one thing I hope you pick up from this lesson. The last lick over our G minor chord last couple of licks we're going to revisit this right so we're going to do that again and then finally this last measure that will ultimately carry us into the chord change here calls back to some of the fretboard movements that we've done before 
So we got the 11th fret, then B flat, then to the F, then back to the G. But we kind of front load this. We've got some quick picking on beat one. So it's one and two, right? Then we've got three and four. Now one and two, three, four and five, six. There we go. That's it. One and two, three, four and five, six. But you see, we're really doing the same move twice. That. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We just come back up and finish with beat six on the 11th fret. And that carries us right into our chord change. But before we get there, we've got to talk about where these notes come in relation to the chord that's being played. Well, they are right out of the G minor pentatonic scale. You might know box one is, right? But what we're gonna do is play it up here, leading from this G, there's the root. Always very important to know where the root is. And so let's map out the minor pentatonic scale right here in this position. And we're not going to change positions. It's one of the focuses here in this lesson is that you can play through the chord changes without changing positions on the neck. It's definitely fun to be able to move around and everything, but it's also quite awesome to be able to sit in one zone of the fretboard and just work there over the chord changes. So back to G minor pentatonic. There's the G. Here's the B flat, that's the minor third of G. That's the 11th fret. And then our C, and think about where you saw these in the licks now that we've, we've already done that as we're going through the notes. So there's the C on the eighth fret of the first string. The D is up at the 10th fret, first string. And then we could keep going. There's definitely another note of the G minor pentatonic scale. It's an F note, but I don't have another string here to, to uh, you know, go higher. And if we go up to this F, it certainly works, but we're out of position. So what we're going to do is drop to this F on the third string, 10th fret. And then there's our G. So the scale pattern in this little, little spot on the fretboard looks like this. Right, and then we would switch. That sounds a little bit different because we are switching octaves in the middle of it, but listen to this. Right? Something like this. You still kind of feel the, the essence of the G minor pentatonic scale. And the cool thing is we can go from here straight into C minor pentatonic without changing our position on the neck. So let's get into that. We're gonna start with our B flat here and do this bending move. It's a compound bend, which means we're gonna bend and then bend some more. And what we're really gonna do is do a half step bend, release, and then back up to a full step bend, slowly on that full step bend. All right, and then we're gonna release and do this pull off. 